All right, so today we're talking about two-step equations. So you can kind of see we have a few two-step equations over here on the left, and we're going to be talking about how to solve them. That's our whole goal for the day, solving two-step equations. We use a flow chart, and if you'll kind of look at this flow chart at the top with me, it has some arrows. So it says you start on this side, and then you finish over here after you've done all three of those steps. If you follow these three steps every time, I promise you will know how to solve two-step equations. So the first step says make sure it's an addition problem. And how we do that is we do LCO, because we're going to do leave change opposite. That's the strategy that we use with subtraction. The second thing says to get rid of the constant. The constant is the one without the variable next to it. Okay, and to get rid of the constant, we're going to add the opposite. All right, the next thing says we're going to get rid of the coefficient. The coefficient is the number right next to the variable. And to do that, we're going to do the inverse. So to get rid of the coefficient, we're going to do the inverse. You're going to hear me talk about those terms quite a few times this whole tutorial. So um, maybe get used to those, use them, constant, coefficient, all of those things. So we're going to start just with a simple one. 6x plus 23 equals 125. So first thing I want to do is I want us to label really quickly the constant and the coefficient. So the constant is the one that is not next to the variable. So this guy is right next to the variable, kind of hugging it. So this is the constant. The constant here is the one that is not right next to the variable. So 23 would be the constant in this case, which means that 6 would be the coefficient. We should be able to see this at the beginning of the problem as we begin to work, and we're just going to kind of keep that information in our mind as we move forward. So what I tell my kids to do is to draw a line. I have to keep some things balanced. So you guys have seen some balances before. It's almost like you have a balance, and you have to keep it to where the balance is actually the same on each side. So if we're saying whatever you do to one side, you do to the other, it's basically so we can keep our equation balanced on each side. So we're going to draw our line, and the first step says make sure it's an addition problem. Well, it is an addition problem, so I've done that step, which means I'm going to go ahead and move to step two. Step two says get rid of the constant. We said 23 is a constant, and how? It says add the opposite. Well, the opposite of 23 is negative 23. So to get rid of the 23, we're going to add a negative 23, and whatever I do to one side, I do to the other. So that's what's happening. At this point, you should notice 23 and negative 23, they cancel. That's what we want. We want those to cancel out so that we're kind of getting this variable more by itself over here. So what we have left over here on the left-hand side, we have 6x, so we bring it down, and then this is just an integer problem, so 125 plus negative 23. They're not on the same team, so I'm going to do some scratch work. 125 minus 23, they battle, and I get 102. And it is positive 102 because this positive team won. So at this point, if you'll take a look, we really just have a one-step equation here. So we go back to our flow chart. We finish step two. Now we're on to step three. It says get rid of the coefficient. And we said that six is the coefficient here. So to get rid of the coefficient, we do the inverse. Well, the first question we have to ask is what's happening to this variable? The variable is being multiplied by 6. So this variable is being multiplied by 6. So if the variable is being multiplied by 6, the inverse would be to divide by 6. Whatever you do to one side, you do to the other. So 6 divided by 6, those guys cancel. So you have x equals, and then 102 divided by 6, 102 divided by 6, 6 goes into 10 once. And 6 goes into 42 7 times. So it looks like x equals 17. I don't have to worry about positives or negatives. Those are both positive um, integers. So I just have to worry about doing my division correctly and getting the answer. So x equals 17. Okay? One thing here, we said that the inverse of multiply by 6 is to divide by 6. Multiplication and division... Those are inverse operations. So the inverse of multiply is divide. The inverse of divide is multiply. Okay? So very good. Let's move on to the second example. 
Okay, you'll notice this one's a little bit different. Our variable is actually on the right side of our equation. It doesn't change anything for us. We're still going to draw our line. We're still going to do everything that we did before, and we'll start over with our flow chart. So make sure it's an addition problem. Well, it is an addition problem, so we've already done that. We don't need to do any LCO. Step number two says get rid of the constant. Well, I wonder in this equation, which one is the constant? If you'll take a look at it, think for a second. The constant is the one that is not attached to the variable. So in this case, our constant is negative 2. Okay, so it says to get rid of the constant, we add the opposite. So the opposite of negative 2, we're going to add a positive 2. Okay, so whatever you do to one side, you do to the other. you got to keep it balanced. You've probably already noticed 2 and negative 2, they're going to cancel out, which is exactly what we want. So over here on this side, we have 2 plus 5, which is 7. And we have x over 7 left over here. Okay. The next thing says to get rid of the coefficient. So the 7 is the one that's with the variable. It's attached to the variable. And to get rid of the coefficient, we're going to do the inverse. Okay. So we, we have to ask ourselves what is happening to this variable. This variable is being divided by... 7. If the variable is being divided by 7, we said the opposite of division is multiplication. So instead of dividing by 7, when we do the inverse, we're going to multiply each side by 7. So this guy, I multiply by 7 over here. Whatever I do to one side, I do to the other. These guys end up canceling out. And the reason these end up canceling out, I just want to kind of show you for a second, to multiply fractions, you know you've got them. It's top times top, so that would be 7x, and bottom times bottom, and 7 times 1 would be 7. Well, 7 divided by 7 is just 1, and we don't write 1x. We don't really like to say that. We just write x, okay? So all that to say this ends up canceling out, and we have x equals, and 7 times 7 is 49. Okay, so in this case, x equals 49. All right, next example. We have x over negative 4 minus 5. So let's go back to our flow chart. Again, that's the very first thing that we do every time after we draw our line. So we'll draw our line and then go back to our flow chart. Make sure it's an addition problem. Well, in this case, it's not an addition problem, so I need to do LCO to fix it. So I'm going to leave the first term, change subtraction to addition. I need the opposite of 5, which is negative 5. Okay. Now I've done step number 1, so I can move on to step number 2. Step 2 says get rid of the constant. So again, you can probably think to yourself the constant is the one without the variable. So this guy is pretty attached to the variable. This one is going to be the constant here. So to get rid of the constant, which is negative 5, I add the opposite. So the opposite of negative 5 is positive 5. Whatever you do to one side, you do to the other, plus 5. You can probably already tell negative 5 and positive 5, they're going to cancel each other out. So x over negative 4 is all that's left on this side. And 20 plus 5 is 25. Okay, so we go back to our flow chart. We are done with step two. That means we're moving on to step three. Step three says get rid of the coefficient, which is the one with the variable, and we do the inverse to do that. So again, we ask ourselves what is happening to this variable. This variable is being divided by negative four. Well, the inverse of division, we said, is multiplication. So the variable is being divided by negative four, to get rid of a divide by negative 4, I'm going to multiply by negative 4. Whatever I do to one side, I do to the other. Again, just like last time, the, these guys cancel, and I'm left with x by itself, which is exactly what I want. And 25 times negative 4, well, we know 25 times 4 is 100, and we can use our triangle. A positive times a negative is a negative answer. So negative 100 is the answer for this guy. All right, last example here. 
25 minus 2x equals 72. Again, we're going to start with our line down the middle, and then we start with the first thing on the flowchart. Make sure it's an addition problem. It is not yet. So leave, change, opposite. Now we're done with step one. Go into step two. Get rid of the constant. Think about it. Look at both. Which one is the one that is not attached to the variable? Hopefully your eyes are more drawn towards 25, and 25 is the constant in this case. So how do I get rid of the constant? I add the opposite. So to get rid of a positive 25, I'm going to add a negative 25. Whatever I do to one side, I do to the other. Okay? So 25 and negative 25, those guys cancel. I'm left over on this side with a negative 2x. And then this is 72 plus negative 25. Well, that's just an integer problem. They're not on the same team, so we need to battle. So I need to do a little bit of borrowing here. 12 minus 5 is going to be 7. And then 6 minus 2 is going to be 40, so 47. So we got 72 plus negative 25, and that gave me 47. And then the last step here, so we did step number two on our flow chart. To get to step number three, it says to get rid of the coefficient. And as you can tell, our coefficient here, negative two. So what is happening to this variable? This variable is being multiplied by negative two. To get rid of a multiply by negative two, the inverse would be to divide by negative two. Again, whatever we do to one side, we do to the other. So I don't know you guys, but I don't know what 47 divided by 2 is off the top of my head. So I would come over here. I would do some scratch work. That's going to be 2. 2 goes into 7 three times. And I get 6. And when I'm, when I'm stuck here, I add a decimal, add a 0. And 2 goes into 10 five times. So it looks like 23.5 is what we're looking at. And I use the triangle. A positive divided by a negative is a negative. So negative 23.5. Again, the biggest thing to remember is your flow chart. If you will start with the flow chart and make sure you do your LCO, okay? Do your LCO, then Get rid of the constant, then get rid of the coefficient. That's going to be the best way absolutely to solve these equations.